Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Today, I will present my presentation. But before that, why don't we just remember the memories we had before in our physical class? Okay, where we go to the class with a big pack of books, mingles with friends, okay, have a chit chat with the lecturers and so forth. Okay, but sadly, after COVID-19 hit the world, now all the memories, all, all the good memories have been taken away for the past two years. If you can see in this slide, you can see that lecturer, this lecturer, okay, this cute lecturer, really rely on the use of this her laptop, okay, the use of projector, the whiteboard, in order to um, convey the teaching and learning, right? But somehow. With the emergence of information communication and technology, ICT, the education landscape has begun to change. Okay, so by integrating ICT into education, it can actually complement, okay, it can actually enrich and transform education for better. So how? By using learning management system, such as this one, Blackboard Collaborate or Blackboard Ultra, Google Classroom, use of Google's email, okay, and then we have WhatsApp and so forth. But what is actually um, things that can um, push for the successful implementation of the use of ICT? Okay, so as what we know, okay, by blending uh, the current and previous uh, teaching and learning methods, it actually can convey into a better education, okay, education experience, right? Okay, so for today's presentation, I will uh, present a presentation entitled Effects of Technology Access and Self-Efficiency Towards Lecturers' Readiness in Blended Learning. So, uh, without further delay, I will introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Sharifa Rabia Al Adawiya Binti Sebadru Hisham. It's such a long name, is it? But eventually you can call me Shah. Okay, Shah as Shasha, but Shah only. Okay, <laughs> so I'm from Department of Management, Space UTM, Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so for today's agenda, it will be divided into four sections. So the first one, introduction to blended learning. As you can see in my slide, um, I will explain on what is blended learning, the characteristic of it, and then the importance of lecturer readiness. Okay, and the second one will be attitudes and blended learning. Okay, I will explain on how attitudes through uh, technology efficiency and technology access work as variable that influence and affect the learning and how it influence also the lecturer's readiness. Okay, and the third part will be analysis and the last one will be discussion. So, what is blended learning? Do you know? Do you know? Huh? Okay, so if you don't know, then it is it will be my responsible to explain to you what is planned the learning okay so uh, we go for the build data first okay as what we as a human if we want to know someone we need to know the data okay so that's um, blended learning so what is blended learning it has an other names also known as flexible learning hybrid learning and also flipped learning Okay, it started to emerge in 1998, but started to gain uh, attention on the 2000s until today. Okay, uh, so blended learning is actually the union of synchronous interaction with technology learning and also the asynchronous interaction. Okay, so why lecture readiness is important? Okay, so for the first one, to ensure smooth transaction of knowledge during teaching and learning between lecturer and readiness. Okay, because if the lecturer itself is not ready to teach by uh, using technology, 
So how the knowledge will be transformed? Hmm, right? And then another way is to help instructional designer to provide a better online course. Okay, so the next part will be factors affecting attitude towards blended learning. Okay, so we have two factors in this uh, presentation. The first one, technology access, and then the second one will be technology and uh, technical usage self-efficacy. Okay, so we begin with the technology access first. Okay, so attitude towards uh, the use of technology in the teaching and learning process are more likely influenced by different variable. Okay, so technology access. Okay, for instance, uh, require lecturers to have a, a, a good access to technology. Okay, so the challenges of technology accessibility should not be ignored. Right, because the high speed internet connection will trigger the success of uh resources in blended learning okay and then um, lecturers with uh, high ability to assess information uh, by using technology will more likely have a positive attitude towards blended learning okay and ability and will uh, will influence lecturer attitude towards blended learning okay so it also show that respondent with computer will have more positive attitude towards online learning Okay, so basic skill and the ability to operate computer will have a positive attitude towards blended learning. Okay, so based on this agreement, technical usage self-efficacy is expected to have is expected to have a positive relationship between lecturer's attitude towards blended learning. Okay, uh, in another word, if you know to do if you know the technology, then you will be more likely to use it okay to use it in your teaching and learning but if let's say I, I do not know how to use technology i do not know how to use canva i do not know how to use kahoot in my um teaching and learning okay it will be more difficult to me so i will more likely like uh, will be ah why why i need to do this oh boring or something like that okay this research uh, used a theory of planned behavior to examine factors that UTM space lecturers consider as important in the adoption of blended learning and also uh, be used to explain the relationship among the factors. So, theory of planned behavior is actually provide a very simple and efficient framework of investigation of an individual's intent to um, actually perform context specific action as mentioned by Rousseau 2015 okay so therefore as you can see in the slide the, the this study is underpinned by uh, TPB okay theory of planned behavior in examining the lecturer's readiness towards acceptance of new technology of teaching and learning, which is blended learning, okay? And as mentioned before, TPB can use to examine factors that lecturers consider as important in the adaption of blended learning, okay? Or more importantly, and as their readiness. Okay, also explain the relationship among the factors, okay, which are mediated by attitude. Okay, so the higher the factors affirmation does, it will lead to a positive attitude towards blended learning and will increase the lecturer's readiness for blended learning directly and also indirectly. Okay, for our research methodology, we this research we use Matpad S. Okay, we want to examine the measurement, the structure model because uh, by using Matpad S, we do not require any normal assumption and the survey research is normally not normally distributed as mentioned by Chin 2003. Okay, so this one, okay, is uh, the step that we take, this research take in order to um, conduct the analysis okay first we start with common method bias and then we go for more model development and then uh, structural model assessment of to know the multivariate screeners and also the factors okay so next slide okay so the finding uh, this one 
Okay, merely uh, the uh, data that we have studied, we use a single source. Okay, so accordingly, we use a sequence of tests uh, is ad was adopted, whereby we first test uh, the common matter bias as mentioned before through the testing of full culinarity and all the variable rega uh, regress against a common variable which is if the VIF is uh, less or equal to 3.3 then there is no bias from uh, single source data and then uh, the analysis that we have uh, yielded that VIF is less than 3.3 so a single source bias was not a serious issue with our data okay so as you can see all these are uh, less than 3.3 next one we also test the model development by using a two-step uh, approach Okay, so first, we test the validity and reliability of the instrument by using a uh, guideline from HAIR 2019 and RAMAYA 2018. Then, uh, we ran the structure model in order to test the hypothesis that we have developed. Okay, so for the measurement model, we assess the loading, so we assess the average variance extracted, AVE, and the composite reliability, CR. So, the value of loading, the value of AVE should be um, more or equal to 0 0.5. And the CR, the composite reliability, should be uh, more or equal to 0 0.7. So, as shown in table 2, all the AVE are higher than 0 0.5. And the CR are all higher than 0 0.7. So, the loading is acceptable with only one or two loading score less than 0 0.70. Eight. Okay, so also in the step two, we assess the discrimi discriminant of validity by using the HTMT criterion. Okay, so the HTMT value should be less or equal to 0 0.85. Okay, the stricter criterion and the more lenient criterion should be less or equal to 0 0.9. Okay, so now we will go to the next slide. Okay, so following the suggestion by Hare 2017 and Kane 2017, so we assess the multivariate screeners and cortices. So the results showed that the data collected were not uh, multivariate normal. Uh, as mentioned by Mardias, multivariate screeners, uh, beta should be 5.115. P value should be 0 0.01 and Maria multivariate cortus uh, beta should be 62.566 and the P value should be uh, less than 0 0.01. Okay. So following the suggestion of HAIR 2019, we reported the path coefficient, the standard error, the T value and the P value for the structure model by using a 5000 sample resample bootstrapping procedure by Ramaya 2018. Okay, so we also take into consideration uh, from Han and Ang 2017 uh, that a combination of p-value, confidence interval, and effect size can be uh, considered instead of p-value for testing the significance of the hypothesis. So, table 4, this table, summarize, sorry, table 4, table 3 summarize the structural model assessment. Okay, so, uh, based on the T uh, statistic value, you can see here, okay, the technical usage self efficiency was found to have a positive significance for attitudes, but not for technology access. Okay, then attitudes were also found to have a significant positive effect on readiness. So, for the discussion, what we can conclude that technical usage self-efficiency have a positive significance toward uh, attitudes, but not for technology access. Okay, so attitudes give a significantly positive effect towards readiness. Okay, it means that if you have a good attitude, then you will have a positive effect in your uh, readiness towards learning. Okay, 
So increasing the level of attitude will increase the uh, relationship between technological, uh, technical usage, self-efficiency, self-efficiency towards readiness. And attitude was not mediated the relationship for technology access. And then the next one. Technical usage self-efficiency have significant relationship with attitude. So, the belief in one ability to successfully perform a technologically sophisticated new task and then the higher the belief in performing technology needed for better learning, the higher level of positive attitudes in readiness of blended learning. Okay? And then attitude gives a significantly positive effect to readiness. So by posing a positive attitude in blended learning, readiness level for blended learning also will increase. Okay, so the same concept apply in our daily life. If we if we pose any if we show any positive attitudes, then the end result will be positive. Okay, it will be fruitful to us. Right. So summary from um, our research. So we need to break the conventional teaching of one size fit all because not uh, every uh, learners have the same abilities to accept the knowledge that uh, have been that will be transferred by the uh, lecturer. Okay, so we need flexibility flexibility in terms of time and should be able to be personalized to the student okay to cater um, the knowledge transfer uh, based on student needs okay and then um, by posing a high level of readiness from the lecturer, it can also increase students' motivation and interest in uh, knowledge uh, in accepting knowledge from the lecturer itself. Okay, so for future suggestion, okay, we we suggest uh, to add to any future research to use other mediating factors in order to investigate okay the readiness of blended learning. All right. And last but not least, uh, we also want to. I also want to acknowledge um, UTS Space for the uh, UTS Page Research Grant SPF PDF 2006 that have been granted to me. Thank you very much for UTS Space, and thank you so much for you guys um, for for your time. Okay, to listen to my presentation and I hope I can see you guys back again uh, with different slot of different slot of uh, research okay and if there is any uh, good things that you learn from me Alhamdulillah it's all from God from our world and if there is any mistake uh, you can just uh, contact me okay or leave your comment in the YouTube uh, in the comment section okay and uh, I'm uh, I also want to uh, express uh, my gratitude for being able to present for this uh, conference okay thank you for the organizer organizer and thank you for accepting me that's all from me I'm Sharifa from KL and stay safe everyone